So welcome to Monday of Holy Week. Uh, what I want to do for you is I just want to stop and uh, let's just pray. Dear Heavenly Father, as we walk through today and as we walk through the rest of this week, I pray the reality of what Jesus walked through, the reality of what God was doing through Jesus for us. I pray that, re that reality would hit us, it would impact us, and it would impact us deeply. And I just pray in the name of Jesus, as Sam talks, as I talk, that you would just somehow take your words from Scripture and really, really, really impact our hearts. And I just pray for a completely new understanding of, of Holy Week and, and the understanding of what you were doing through your son, Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen. So welcome to Monday, but uh, real fast before we jump into Jesus' life on Monday, I have to tell you, one of the things that has always been a challenge for me ever since I was a kid was to fully understand what happened in Lent. Um, what, what does it mean? What does Holy Week mean? And one of the things that I realized in the years past, so many people use such big words and they, they threw in ideas from Psalms and Zechariah. And, and I, I, would, I would read or I would hear this information and I was so confused. Well, what, what did happen on Monday? What did happen on Tuesday? So I thought Sam's idea was brilliant. Let's simply walk people through day by day. Let's enter into what Jesus was saying, what he was doing, what he was experiencing. And so that's what we want to do for you. We just want to jump right into scripture. We really want to just walk you through this story so that you at home with your kids can just walk through this day by day. And the one thing I have to say before I jump into today, um, I thought Sam's talk yesterday was really, really impactful to me whenever I heard him say, Jesus walked into the city and the crowds were just screaming and, and, and cheering him like, Hosanna, Hosanna. Can you imagine being Jesus walking into that moment knowing these are the same people who are going to be chanting, crucify him in a few days? That, that, just, I, that reality just impacted me and I, I don't know what you do with that, but uh, talk about the weight of the world being on Jesus. Talk about him being able to see things from spiritual eyes and everybody around him was just still kind of fuzzy and all that. Anyway, let's jump into today. Um, the first thing I want to start with is the context of Holy Week. The context of Holy Week goes all the way back to the children of Israel when they were slaves in Egypt. Uh, you can read all about it, by the way, in Exodus 12. It's a great story. I would really encourage you to read it. But the entire context is um, one of the last um, challenges that Moses has against Pharaoh. Um, there were slaves in Egypt, and God told the children of Israel, put blood on the doorposts of your home. If you put blood on the doorpost, the angel of death is going to sweep over Egypt. And if you have blood on the doorpost, your oldest son will be saved. If you do not have blood on your doorpost, uh, the oldest is going to die. And that night, the angel of death went through Egypt, and that's when Pharaoh's oldest son died, and that started the beginning of Pharaoh's heart being broken and releasing the children of Israel. So the week of Passover is a week celebrating that moment in Exodus 12. And as we walk through um, Holy Week, one of the things I'm hoping uh, that hits you at home is the reality of what God was doing with Jesus. We need to remember what God was doing. He was about to hand over his son to the very people he wants to save, and he was about to hand his son over to them, and they were about to kill him. God was going to allow body, um, Jesus' body to be crushed. He was going to allow his son's body to bleed, and he was doing it for you to be saved. I would encourage you to read this scripture at home. Uh, let me give you the reference. It's 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 18 to 20. This is what it says in the Living Bible Translation. God paid a ransom to save you from the impossible road to heaven. With the precious lifeblood of Jesus, or precious lifeblood of Christ, the sinless, spotless Lamb of God. Jesus' blood saves us. Jesus, if we were to use words um, referencing um, Passover, he is our Passover. Today's Monday. You can read about what happened in Jesus' life um, in Mark 11, verses 11 and 19. 
And when I start reading in verse 11, verse 11 is the end of Palm Sunday, and verse 12 is the beginning of what Jesus walked through with his disciples um, on Monday. Let's read. Jesus entered Jerusalem and went to the temple. He looked around at everything, but since it was already late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve. The next day, as they were leaving Bethany, Jesus was hungry. Seeing the distance, seeing in the distance a fig tree in leaf, he went to find out if it had any fruit. When he reached it, he found nothing but leaves, because it was not the uh, season for figs. Then he said to the tree, May no one ever eat fruit from you again. And his disciples heard him say it. On reaching Jerusalem, Jesus entered the temple area and began driving out those who were buying and selling there. He overturned the tables of the money changers and the benches of those who were selling doves and would not allow anyone to carry merchandise through the temple courts. As, as, um, and, he was taught, and then he taught them. He said, it is, isn't it not written? My house will be called a house of prayer for all nations, but you have made it a den of robbers. The chief priests and the teachers of the law heard this and began looking for a way to kill him, for they feared him because the whole crowd was amazed at his teaching. When evening came, they went out of the city. Two things here that happened that I just want to talk about. The first thing is he curses the fig tree. If you were to read this scripture and you didn't have context for the rest of the week, um, and you'd read the scripture and Jesus, you know, saw the fig tree, didn't have fruit, and he cursed it. You would think Jesus had, had anger problems. Actually, he doesn't have anger problems, but he was angry. He was angry at, um, in, in, in a kind of way where it wasn't a selfish anger, like I'm going to get revenge on you kind of anger. It, it wasn't like that. It was more of a righteous anger, and we're going to talk about that a little bit later on. Jesus sees leaves on this fig tree, and he thinks there might be fruit on it. So he goes over, and he realizes there's no fruit on this fig tree. So he curses it. What was Jesus doing? Why was that taking place? Jesus was teaching the disciples a lesson. Jesus was cursing the kind of life that professes to be good and righteous and holy. But when you get really close to this life, it's nothing but righteous or holy. It offers you nothing. Jesus was showing his disciples God's anger towards the fake person, the person who is a hypocrite, the person who claims to be religious but really has no heart change. The second event, Jesus appears to be angry again. Actually, he is angry, but again, not in a selfish, I want to get revenge on you kind of way. Uh, We call this more of a righteous anger. Jesus was flipping tables and disrupting the people in the temple. Why? Because the religious leaders um, turned Passover into a money-making event. Passover is supposed to be about the celebration of God. It's supposed to be about repentance. It's supposed to be a God moment where people confessed their sins and felt God's grace. It's supposed to be a beautiful connection to God. But the religious leaders flipped it and turned it into ways of making money. Um, Let's talk about how they made money. People were coming from all over Israel to have their God moment, and the religious leaders knew this. So what did they do? Well, they, would, um, they, would, um, they had money, temple money, and they made people exchange their money for temple money, and you guessed it, they made a lot more money on that exchange. Um, also, they were supposed to be buying um, animals like doves and things for sacrifices, and you guessed it, they were overpriced animals. Um, And again, the religious leaders were taking this beautiful God moment and they were flipping it into ways of making money. So just real fast, one of the things that I want to bring out to you is when you hear that, that people were supposed to go to the temple and have a God moment, but the religious leaders use that against them and make extra money, kind of rip them off to make it harder for them. Doesn't something inside you say, hey, this isn't right. This kind of, doesn't something inside you kind of make you angry when you hear that? Exactly. That's what made Jesus angry. That's why we're saying this is not a selfish revenge kind of anger. This is a righteous anger. This kind of anger that says, hey, something's wrong here and someone needs to do something about it. And that's what Jesus was doing in this moment. 
He's walking into the temple. He's seeing this play out. He's flipping over tables and saying, stop it. This is supposed to be a beautiful moment from people of children of Israel to come here and have a God moment. And instead, you're ruining this moment. So for the second time today, Jesus was showing his disciples God's anger. God's anger towards the fake person, the hypocrite, the religious person that claims to have this incredible life change. But when you get closer to them, there is no life change. So on the first day of Passover, my question to you that I would want you to process at home, what do you think Jesus was up to? What do you think Jesus was trying to communicate to his disciples? What do you think um, these scriptures and these stories of Jesus, what do you think they mean to you? What do you think Jesus is talking to you about? Let me ask you this. What, is, what do you think your religion is about? Is it real? Is it fake? Um, as we close out today, one of the things that Sam and I want to remind you every day of is the, these, these three realities. This is a big deal. Everything Jesus went through, he went through for you. And everything Jesus went through, he went through willingly. And everything Jesus went through, his sacrifice changed everything for you. So as we close out on Monday, that was Jesus's day. He goes back um, and out of the city. And then Sam tomorrow is going to pick up what happened on Tuesday.